So, first example. How do I explain this one? You know, you ever seen like a cob of corn, right? That co and, and corn and some other plants also, they have this cover and you have to peel it. And when you peel it, there are grains inside. You know what I'm talking about? That cob is called, in Arabic, it is called sumbula. And in order for me to make sure you understand what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make you repeat some things, okay? What is it called? Sumbula. Sumbula. That is an ear, like the whole bud, of, of grains inside. It could be corn, it could be other things. But when you peel it and it's got a lot of seeds inside, a lot of little, little dots and grains inside, that is called a sumbula. Okay. Now, if I say in English car, what's the plural? Cars. Cars. House. Houses. Mouse. Mice. Mouses. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Mice. Okay, but usually in English, when you have a word, you give it a plural by adding what? S. An S. It usually works. I mean, it doesn't work with, you know, house and house and houses. It works, but mouse, I don't know. You know, but I might as well tell you a joke in the meantime. If you don't laugh, then you have to leave. Okay, so. <laughs> When I was, I was studying economics, and I don't know why I was doing that, but I was studying macroeconomics when I was in college, and our professor was uh, a Chinese fellow. He was, uh, he was doing his PhD in New York City, and he was, he was a macroeconomics professor, and he spoke in a very heavy Chinese accent. And there were 300 students in the class. I mean, this is some of the best sleep I ever had in my life. <laughs> but in any case, so he used, to, he used to give his lecture, and when he would give his lecture, like, you really tried to listen, you didn't understand until he said, exam tomorrow. I was like, <laughs> So the entire class, 300 students, we wrote a petition to the department, please, we cannot take an exam, we don't understand what this man is saying. <laughs> so, he got very upset. He got angry at the entire class. So the next day he came to class and he said, he, you know, he put a PowerPoint on the screen and he said, Professor Wang's list of complaints against English. He says, you complain about my English, I complain about English. <laughs> so he said, the English language doesn't make any sense. You, you know, and especially in, in the US, we, we say things like, you park on a driveway, and you drive on a parkway, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> you know, and, and the plural of house is what? No, the plural of mouse is what? Mice, but the plural of house is not heis. <laughs> and, and, and tooth is teeth, teeth but booth is not beef. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so he had a whole list of these complaints. You know, and he went through, he took 45 minutes and went through all of them, <laughs> right? It was the best economics class I've ever had in my life. But anyway, the point I was going to make to all of you was car is cars, sumbula. Sumbula is singular. Sumbulat, say that. Sumbulat. Sumbulat, that's plural. That is plural. But the Arabic language is kind of cool because you can have more than one plural. It's weird. Like in English, you don't have cars and cars is. is. You don't have that. You have book and books. You don't have book and books and books is. is, is, is. You don't do that. But the Arabic language actually has multiple plurals for one word. I'll give you an example that you know. Kafir? Kafirun? Any other, any other plurals you know? Kufar? Nabi? You can say Nabiyun. You can say what else? Anbiya. You have multiple plurals. It happens all the time in Arabic. So in the Arabic language, Sumbula is singular. What was the plural? Sumbulat. And there's another plural, Sanabil. Sanabil. Now this is vocabulary I'm teaching you without any notes. And if you're brothers, you're not taking notes anyway, but if you're sisters, probably chances are you're writing something down. It's okay. <laughs> but sumbula is singular. Now I'm going to hear from the crowd. What was the singular? Sumbula. What was the plural? Sumbulat. What's the other plural? Sanabil. Now here's the secret. In the Arabic language, they have a concept. I kid you not. This is real. In the Arabic language, they have a concept that you can have singular, you can have plural, and you can have super plural. Literally, super plural. They have singular and plural and 
Super plural. Sumbula is singular. Sumbulat is plural. Sanabil is what? Super plural. So the more powerful plural is which one? Sanabil. You with me so far? Now let's turn to the Quran. In Surah Al Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the ear of grain, Sumbula, but He mentions the plural. He says, مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل سبع سنابل Is that the regular plural or the super plural? I don't remember, you have to tell me. That's the super plural, okay. When you turn to Surah Yusuf, it's the only other time the plural is used. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَقَالَ الْمَلِكِ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَأْكُلُهُنَّ سَبْعٌ عِجَافٌ وَسَبْعَ سُمْبُلَاتٍ خُضْرٍ سُمْبُلَاتٍ What was that? Was that the regular? Was that the singular, the plural, or the super plural? What was that? Ah, so the weak plural is used in Surah Yusuf. And the strong plural is used in Surah Al-Baqarah. And you know what's crazier? What's crazier is in Baqarah, Allah is talking about seven of them. Sab'a Sanabil. Sab'a Sanabil. Seven of them. And in Surah Yusuf, Allah is also talking about seven of them. Sab'a Sumbulat and Khudr. Seven of them both times. So the number is equal. This is seven and that is seven. Then how come one is more powerful and one is weaker? You would say if one is 75 and the other is seven, Okay, I understand this one's more powerful and this one is weaker. But mathematically speaking, both of them in number are what? They're the same. Now in English translation, it says seven ears of grain in Surah Al-Baqarah. And in the English translation, when you go to Surah Yusuf, what does it say? Seven ears of grain. The translation is identical. There is no difference in translation. But Allah chose to use the powerful plural in Baqarah and the weaker plural in Surah Yusuf. How come? How come? When you look at Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says those who spend, the example of those who spend for the sake of Allah, in the path of Allah, is like a single seed. And every seed gives birth to seven ears of grain. And inside every grain, فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ Inside every grain, there are another hundred, inside every ear, there are hundred seeds. وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah multiplies on top of that for whoever He wants. The context of the ayah is, you will take one, you will turn it into seven, every seven will give you another hundred each, and on top of the math that you can do for each of those, seven times one hundred, times seven, times one hundred, for each of those, and you keep going, you keep going like that, on top of the math you can do, Allah has His own calculations, وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah multiplies in His own way, above and beyond that, for whoever He wants, meaning this calculation is beyond human capability. Is this a context of weakness or power? Is this a context of less or more? So the powerful plural is used. When you turn to Surah, Al- Surah Yusuf, the king sees a dream. You remember the dream? Fat cows, skinny cows, seven ears of corn. And the dream is interpreted. And what does the dream mean? You will have seven good years and then you will have seven bad years. Is the seven good years going to give you unlimited resources or limited resources? Limited resources and you have to use them carefully and you have to store them because you will need them for the next Seven years, so you cannot be careless with the seven years of grain example. It's going to be less, it's not going to be too much, so you have to ration. Is this a context of more powerful or weaker? Weaker, in the weaker context Allah used sumbulat, in the more powerful context Allah used sanabil. It's the same word, it's the same number. Surah Yusuf is a Makki surah, Surah Al-Baqarah is a... Madani surah, so the ayat are years apart on the tongue of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Years apart. When he recited Sab'a Sumbulat in Surah Yusuf, it was years ago. And when he recited Sab'a Sanabil in Baqarah, it was years later. Can you imagine that he will think to himself, hmm, years ago I said Sab'a Sumbulat, maybe I should say Sab'a Sanabil here, it fits better. Is that capable, are we capable of doing that as human beings? SubhanAllah Just the way Allah describes a single word A single word I want to give you one more example of the regular plural 
and the, 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 the singular, and the plural, and the super plural. Just one more example of that. Because it's a fun concept. And it changes your perspective on even one word. How is it being translated? How is that being translated? The word is ni'mah. It's probably a word you know. Ni'mah. What does ni'mah mean, commonly translated? Anybody? Blessing. It's okay, you don't have to be afraid. Blessing. Should I say it out loud? What if he finds out I said it? <laughs> don't do that. You can call it out. It's okay. It's okay. You, you, you came to one of my lectures, which means you should be ready to be embarrassed. <laughs> so, ni'mah means what? Blessing. Blessing. The plural of ni'mah is an'um. An'um. I want you to say it. An'um. Okay, so ni'mah is singular. An'um is plural. And then the powerful plural, the super plural, the jam'u kathra, they say in Arabic principles, is ni'am. Ni'am. Okay, so you have ni'mah, and you have an'um, and you have ni'am. It's pretty cool in the Quran, only one time Allah used an'um. And only one time Allah used ni'am. That's it. But one time the weak plural, one time the power, super plural. And what's even cooler is when you're reading the English translation, will they make a distinction between the weak and the powerful plural? Or will they just say blessings? It'll just say blessings, you won't even know there's a difference. You won't see a difference in the translation. Okay. Allah Azza wa Jal talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Very powerful. Describing Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah says, Shakiran li an'umihi. Did you hear the plural? Shakiran li an'umihi. Was that the weak or the strong plural? Oh, that's a test. Allahu Akbar. What should you say? That's the weak plural. Very good. Some of you are good listeners. Alhamdulillah. Two of you answered that one. That's fantastic. An'um is the weak plural. And it was used for Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is as though Allah is saying he was grateful to the few favors of Allah. But that sounds wrong. That sounds strange. When we think of Ibrahim alayhi salam, we think of him as thanking Allah for what? Many favors. But the ayah says he was grateful to Allah for few favors. If Allah wanted to say many, many, many favors, he would have said, Shakiran li ni'amihi. But he didn't say that, he said Shakiran li an'umihi There's a very powerful lesson in this Very powerful lesson before I go to the other ayah The lesson in that is No matter, even if you're Ibrahim alayhi salam And you are grateful to Allah from beginning to end And you are grateful in the way that, that few human beings will ever ever be Ever be on the face of this earth At the end of your life when you look back and you thank Allah for the favors that He gave you you were only able to accomplish thanking Allah for just a few in pers in, with respect to the actual number of favors He did. Human beings are not capable of thanking Allah in proportion for the majority of His favors. At the end of our lives, when we turn back, if, if, even if my entire life was about shukr, I will only have accomplished a minority of shukr. It will be an'um, not ni'am, that I was able to actually thank Allah for. As a matter of fact, most people can't even truly thank Allah for one ni'mah. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا The singular is used. If you try to count and truly appreciate the one ni'mah of Allah, you will not be able to encompass it. When we do ni'mah, when we thank Allah for having our eyes, when we thank Allah for having a job, when we thank Allah for having feet and having toes on our feet, when we thank Allah for a tongue that can move, when we thank Allah for these things, we don't even know how much it helps us. We have some idea of how it helps us. We don't even know how much it would harm us. We have some imagination of how much it would harm us. We don't really fully understand the ni'mah. We can only think based on our limited imagination. We can't even do that for one. So it's pretty awesome that Ibrahim salam was able to do it for a few. It's, it's, an, it's a testimony to the gratitude of Ibrahim salam. But the other context, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He says, Wa asbagha alaykum ni'amahu wahiratan wa batina. He unleashed his favors on you. He unleashed his blessings on you. The ones you can see and the ones you cannot see. Wahiratan wa batinatan. Is this a context of few or many? So he used ni'am. He used the powerful plural. And these are not ayat next to each other. These are years apart in Revelation, pages and pages apart in the Quran. How do you keep track? of what should fit where perfectly. 
This, this is what Allah Azza wa does in the Quran. This was my first example. We're moving 